All right, we talked about the scapular elevators. Now we've elevated the scapula. Now we have to get it back down. So we need scapular depressors. Makes sense, right? So always the functional groups are always in pairs. Flexors and extensors, abductors, adductors, elevators, depressors, protractors, retractors. So they always go in pairs because you get out of anatomical position, then you got to get back into it, right? So um, same learning objectives about knowing the origins, insertions, and ac actions and innovations. Um, you want to be able to identify positions of active and passive insufficiency for any um, multi-joint muscle that crosses the shoulder. There's only one in um, the group of uh, scapular depressors, which is the latissimus dorsi. And um, actually we won't talk about the um, active and passive insufficiency of the lats until we talk about the spine in chapter eight, because that's where it really comes in. Because the latissimus dorsi covers so many joints covers spinal joints, covers the shoulder, covers blah, blah, blah. So um, it can be actively or passively insufficient. Um, mostly passively, but we'll talk about it. Um, I want you to be able to describe the reversal of muscle function in the latissimus dorsi that is involved in crutch walking. And we'll talk about that um, because it, that's pretty important, right? Okay. So the scapulothoracic depressors, the major group, the primary ones, are the lower trapezius, the latissimus dorsi, the pectoralis minor, and the subclavius. So you're like, what? The subclavius? That doesn't even attach to the scapula. It does by way of the acromioclavicular joint. <laughs> so um, the latissimus dorsi also doesn't attach to the scapula. Um, but it does it by by way of the glenohumeral joint. So um, these muscles work in scapular depression, even though they don't directly attach to the scapula. Isn't that interesting? Um, so they work together to depress the shoulder girdle and the humerus, resulting in shoulder depression. So shoulder depression is important because you don't want to wear your shoulders as earrings. Um, we're always, always nagging people in the clinic. Take your shoulders down, take your shoulders down. Um, interestingly enough, there's a little blurb in the book about the levator scapula and how tightness of the levator scapula is often attributed to mental stress because we're stressed out and we're hunching our shoulders, but it's often a result of poor posture rather than um, mental stress. So rounded shoulders, um, forward shoulder position, um, which you'll talk more about this summer when you talk about posture. Um, over time, you can really um, inflame the levator scapula and end up with spasms. It can result in things like cervicogenic headaches and um, other issues, um, shoulder alignment issues. So um, it's important to realize that um, the shoulder muscles all work together. And if any one of them is not doing its job, it can mess up your life. So we don't want to do that. So the lower trapezius, um, it is a depressor and the upper trapezius is an elevator of the scapula. So they're doing opposite motions. Um, they work together in a force couple where they're pulling in opposite directions to upwardly rotate the scapula. But the lower trapezius, um, its origin is low, much lower than the upper trapezius, hence the name. Um, it's inferior to the middle trapezius, it's inferior to the upper trapezius, but it's still um, one of the more superficial muscles on the back. Um, its origin is on the spinous processes of T6 through T12. So you can think of it as being sort of um, just below, kind of overlapping a little bit with the rhomboids, even though the rhomboids are deep. Um, the insertion is the root of the scapular spine, that medial end of the scapular spine that we call the root. So it has a pretty small insertion and a big, broad um, origin, also known as a triangular muscle. So the, the lower fibers of the trapezius are a triangular muscle. The middle fibers of the trapezius are pretty triangular and the upper trapezius as well. So um, they're, they're all, it's like three triangles stacked on top of each other, if you want to think of it that way. Um, the 
lower trapezius does scapular depression because that's what we're talking about. And you can see that line of pull almost vertical down from the root of the scapula towards the um, spinous processes. And um, it also is in the force couple for upward rotation, which we'll talk more about. It also takes the spinal accessory nerve, um, cranial nerve 11, just like the upper trapezius. The latissimus dorsi, super interesting because it's a scapular depressor, but it doesn't attach to the scapula. What gives, right? Well, we know that all four shoulder joints, the glenohumeral, the scapula thoracic, the chromioclavicular, and the sternoclavicular joint, all work together. So if you pull the glenohumeral joint down, you're going to pull the scapula down as well. So the latissimus dorsi is the most superficial muscle of the lower part of the back. Um, it has that reversal of function for crutch ambulation, which we'll talk about in a minute. So if you look at the superficially, the muscles on the back, um, you're going to see the upper trapezius on the upper back upper to mid back, and you're going to see the latissimus dorsi on the lower back. So um, it has, it's a big, big, big triangular muscle, that big, broad attachment um, going to a pretty small one in the floor of the bicipital groove. So it wraps around the front of the humerus, the anterior side of the humerus, right into that bicipital groove. So you can see right away, that gives it a line of pull for um, shoulder glenohumeral adduction, glenohumeral extension, um, medial rotation, and um, hyperextension, and scapular depression by pulling down, pulling inferiorly on that um, glenohumeral joint. And the, since the scapula is attached, it comes with, right? <laughs> Pretty handy. And it has its own nerve, the thoracodorsal nerve. So if you think it's on the a uh, dorsal side of the thorax that kind of gives you the nerve. Um, so it's it's big muscle, it needs its own nerve, right? A lot of these um, trunk muscles have their own nerve. The pec minor, pectoralis minor, is deep to the pec major. Um, its origin is the anterior surface of the third through fifth rib. So its origin is inferior to its insertion. So the the insertion moves towards the origin, depressing the scapula. The insertion is the coracoid process of the scapula. So remember that's that little finger-like projection on the um, anterior part of the scapula. So when that, that insertion moves towards the origin, the scapula gets depressed. It's also part of the force coupled for downward rotation. So I think of the pectoralis major as being the eor of muscles. It's scapular depression and downward rotation. So it's a down, it's the Eeyore of muscles. I love Eeyore, but you know, he's, he's kind of a downer. That's his thing. Um, it gets the medial and lateral pectoral nerve just like the pec major does. So the pec minor and pec major both get the um, pectoral nerve. Makes sense, right? So here's our little scapula in review with the coracoid process. It's that finger-like projection of bone kind of sticks out like a crow's beak um, it, from the anterior surface and it's attachment site for several muscles, including the pec minor. Um, so, you know, just for grins, list all, everything that attaches to, it's also an attachment for some ligaments too. Uh, make a little list of everything that attaches to the coracoid process. The medial and lateral borders of the scapula um, are also attachments for a lot of these muscles. So, um, and the inferior angle is how we're gonna track our scapular motion. Is it upwardly rotated? Is it downwardly rotated? We can also look on a disarticulated scapula. We can look at the glenoid fossa. Is it upwardly rotated or is it downwardly rotated? So the subclavius, it's this cute little muscle right underneath the clavicle, subclavius. Its name gives you where it is. Um, its origin is near the cartilage of the first rib near the manubrium, and its insertion is the inferior surface of the clavicle. So when the insertion moves towards the origin, you depress the clavicle, and hence, since the clavicle is attached to the um, scapula at the acromion process, at the acromioclavicular joint, 
you depress the scapula as well. So you depress the clavicle and the scapula goes along for the ride. Um, it has its own um, early exiting nerve on the upper trunk of the brachial plexus. So it, it doesn't have a name, it's just an early exiting nerve. Cool, right? <laughs> so when you um, do scapulothoracic depression, um, with the lower trapezius and latissimus dorsi, pec minor, and subclavius, the muscles work together to depress the shoulder girdle and the humerus, resulting in shoulder depression. So the whole shoulder girdle goes down. This becomes important um, because you, a lot of clinical activities, we need to elevate the thorax, like crutch walking. Um, we have the crutches um, pushing against our ribs. We're putting our weight through our upper extremities through our hands. So it turns it into a closed chain activity for the upper extremity. Um, we push down on the crutches and then the um, latissimus dorsi contracts to bring the trunk forward through the arms. So it's um, performing basically glenohumeral extension, but the distal end is fixed and the proximal end is moving through. So um, crutch walking or ambulation with a walker, particularly if you have partial or non-weight bearing on one of your extremities, that's really important. Um, the other times when it's useful is doing like wheelchair push-ups. Um, you're, we're gonna um, use those muscles to substitute being able to unweight our ischial tuberosities. And that's the little diagram here. We're pushing down on the arms of the wheelchair and unweighting the ischial tuberosities to get some circulation in the tissue there. Um, so really useful sources of muscular substitution for people with weakened or paralyzed lower extremities because you can't use your feet to unweight. <laughs> 